Victor, when I was, I think, about 12 years old, I had this realization that there could have been nothing rather than something. And it frightened me so much, I, I, I had to put the thought out of my head, or I was just petrified. And then, maybe 10 years later, I remembered that thought, and it's really been with me for the rest of my life, and it still is. It, it is really the ultimate human question. How do we begin to address it? Well, the uh, answer is that the universe is nothing. It's kind of a crystallized nothing. It, the, it, uh, it, it's, the, what we have now is, is a phase transition that went from nothing to something. Now, that's, that's uh, uh, a bit hard to understand, perhaps, but... Phase uh, transition uh, like from ice to yeah, water or ice, water to steam. Yeah. Well, more like from uh, water to ice. You go from a state... Now, of course, nothing is, is, is uh, water isn't nothing, so it's not, a, it's not a perfect example. But you go from a state of uh, higher symmetry to a state of, of lower symmetry, of, of one with more structure. And, and uh, in physics, in nature, uh, that tends to be the way things go. The, the more symmetric state is actually the less stable state. And so they tend to, uh, uh, go through this transformation to something more structured that happens to be the lower energy uh, arrangement of the molecules. And, and in the case of water to ice, that's a good example. You have a raindrop, let's say, maybe a perfectly spherical ball of water would be even better to think of because the rainbow is a little distorted by gravity. But just imagine a sphere of water and you keep lowering the temperature and it, and it crystallizes into ice or or some water vapor uh, will crystallize into a beautiful snowflake mm -hmm. with, all, with all its uh, marvelous structure. Uh, and it's a, a process that's called spontaneous symmetry breaking, where you go from the, the more symmetric state to the less symmetric state. And if, now we're, we're accustomed to thinking of, of snowflakes uh, melting because we have a lot of, of heat around and, and, and uh, the temperature usually rise, rises up during the day and melts the snowflakes. But if you imagine a situation where the temperature was very low, uh, that snowflake would retain its, its stable configuration. Uh, it takes energy, in other words, to reverse the process, because that is already the lower energy process. Now, so the rule then is you go from the more symmetric situation to the less symmetric situation because the less symmetric situation is the one that's more stable. Uh, another example would be a pencil falling over. That's a very simple example. You have a pencil balanced on its eraser end, and it's uh, symmetric uh, to rotations around the axis, and it falls over, and it has selected out a particular uh, direction in space. Now, notice that the laws of gravity haven't changed in that process. The laws of gravity are still symmetric around uh, that axis, but a particular direction in space has been, has been singled out by that process. So there are many examples of this in nature where you break a symmetry as you go from uh, a higher energy state to a lower energy state. Now, if you ask what is nothing, that's, that's pretty difficult to define because uh, if you give it some properties, then it's something. <laughs> so let's just imagine what I call the void. Uh, it's a, a region of space where you've removed all the particles, all the energy, and so you have, uh, you have uh, no, no particles at present. You have no particular direction in space uh, selected out, no particular orientation in space. In other words, uh, it's a very symmetric situation, and nothing is more symmetric than nothing, is, is the way I like to put it. And so that's a situation that's going to actually uh, be unstable. So if there ever were such a situation, then the, the, the chances are good that it will, uh, will actually uh, transform by, by natural processes to, to a less symmetric state where then you have, you have structure that you didn't have before.
And so this would be a very naturalistic explanation of why there something emerges out of the nothing. Yeah. And furthermore, uh, although people uh, are surprised by this, it's possible to mathematically describe the situation. You can uh, you can use uh, methods of, of of quantum field theory, and uh, and and just apply an operator that's called the the annihilation operator, and you keep annihilating particles. And they go <laughs> until you go down to the the lowest state, the state of no particles. You can still describe such a state. You can still describe it mathematically in terms of the quantum mechanical wave function and so on. So we can still do this. We can still describe uh, the situation of no particles uh, uh, mathematically. And furthermore, we can also we also have a number of uh, of scenarios that have been published by reputable scientists and reputable journals that show how you can uh, mathematically model the, the transition of the universe from some this, this kind of chaotic state where you know nothing about it to, to a, a material universe. Let me, let me think about this with you. The first thing I, I see is that your nothing is space. Now, my nothing had no space. Mm -hmm. Does your nothing have space? No, because space is a human invention. Space and time are human inventions. So there's nothing stopping us. I use the word nothing so much here, it gets confusing. <laughs> but there's nothing that's stopping us from... I mean, look, if you had a blank sheet of paper, uh, you can still take a pencil and draw a coordinate system, XY coordinate system on that paper. That's, you can and, and, and make measurements. Uh, you could put a particle in there and make a measurement. But prior to that time, it wouldn't matter where, how you oriented that, how you, uh, where you put the origin. So it, that's what I mean by it being symmetric. It's symmetric to our uh, when we attempt to model it in our usual way that we model uh, physics in terms of uh, operational quantities that we measure in the laboratory, like space and time. That don't necessarily have any ultimate meaning. We don't know what their ultimate meanings may be. Uh, they describe something that's out there, but uh, we need not even even know what that is because we have the, the model that describes it, and we can use that model, and we can use that model to describe a situation where there are no particles. I, I, I agree, but I, I, there's one situation that has space, opportunity for orientation, if we don't want to use the word space, with no particles and, and see what happens in that mathematically. Another situation is where there is no space and there's no opportunity for orientation. That, that is more nothing. My nothing is more nothing than your nothing. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, in my view though, the, the space is, is not, uh, something real. It's, 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 it's our invention. Okay. So it's, it's, it's a way we describe phenomena that we observe as part of our, our, our model. But you can, you can imagine perhaps uh, uh, scientists coming up with uh, something else.